has literally been raining all night. Um, and I've been too lazy to get outside and get the buckets out again. I had them out all day yesterday. I completely cleaned the sun cover so it's producing clean water. Same with the bimini because I did some test collections and I was still getting some of that white dust. And that's important. You don't want to be drinking that stuff. Now, I do filter the water before it comes out the tap. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's clean as you can get it. You know, and, but it's, it's water you can drink. So I do save it and I'm saving it now. It's about and here's my front porch. Just scrap wood and got the ladder going up to the boat and got my bicicleta locked up here and tomorrow if it if the uh, lord willing oops I almost hit my nose again god damn yeah so tomorrow we're gonna paint out the bottom first that's the first thing I need to do is get the bottom painted yeah and we're not even looking for blisters anymore <laughs> because if you keep tugging that string you'll end up here for a fucking year, you know, and a hundred thousand dollars poorer. So, tomorrow I'm gonna hopefully, if it doesn't rain, I'm gonna get in here early. I'm gonna put more of my bottom paint here. This transducer for the depth sounder needs to have water based anti fouling paint, and I have a very small container of that. And I'm going to bag, I'm gonna bag the propeller because I kind of have that cleaned up. And I've already got the anode on, and I don't want any bottom paint on the shaft or anything going aft. And when I get the bottom paint on, then I'll take the bag off, then I'll mask the anode, because the anode can't have any coatings at all, and then I'll put the prop speed on that part of the shaft, and of course, everything on the bronze propeller. Still working on the additional reinforcement. I've got the hydrovane instructions on what to do for this lower strut to prevent it from going sliding out again and they said basically drill a hole through but frankly I'm not sure that I'm going to be successful doing that so I'm going to talk to a welder tomorrow who might just make me a swim platform that incorporates a, basically a pipe hanger yeah. it would mount just I probably have to reposition my sign that's the only thing <laughs> You'd have to pretty much, it would go pretty much right through that. So, I don't know. Got some thinking to do there, but we got time. Doesn't it look silly? This is a new engine intake. And this is the uh, cockpit drains. So there's another cockpit drains on the starboard side. That's the only three holes in the bottom of the boat. And of course, I, I ram the anti-fouling up in there. I take one of the small paint rollers and I stick it up on the end of a screwdriver and roll it that way. And I'll do the same for here. Because stuff grows in there. You can see the barnacle uh, landing pads. And I could have taken this to one of the local paint stores and paid them a little bit to mix this up for me. These guys are bringing in another boat. You can see a boat back there. It looks like I'm getting a new neighbor. Quest, San Francisco, California. On the hull. Two blade prop. Pin keel. Good looking boat. I'll be coming in for the same work I'm doing. Okay, so this is what I look like, and this is what the boat looks like after the first complete two car gallons. So I've got 50%, 50% of my paint is done, and I've got the boat completely done one time. And the only mistake is I, I rumbled over my grounding plate, but that really doesn't matter because I don't have a single sideband radio anyway. I might as well just paint it. But I got two gallons of the uh, Pettit 
vivid paint, obviously green color. Um, whenever I have leftovers, I get it within the first two feet of the water line, because that's where most of the stuff grows. You'll get barnacles and stuff down the bottom, but the algae is worse close to the water line. I think that's obvious. It makes sense. I've got a new neighbor here, but that's not a problem. We'll work together and we'll get our projects done. And under the tarp, I'm working on my camouflage, and that's what I'm going to paint this afternoon. That light colored is primer. That's pretty much prepared, ready to paint. Just got to mask it and paint it. And up here in the bow, I want to get after that too. So, that ugly color in the bottom, is uh, that's got to get painted. And I hope to do both today. If I can get them both today, that'll be almost a complete wrap on the, start, the port side. Except for the very back. On the port side, I haven't gone aft of this mark yet. And the orange is kind of taking a uh, hind tit because I can, I can get that while I'm in the water, for one thing, and it's been very hard to paint on either case with this big Fisher 46 getting sanded all the damn time. I don't care about sanding dust getting on the bottom paint. I mean, no, that doesn't impede its performance and nobody cares. I mean, you can see I'm not worried about drips and stuff like that or half dry clumps, clumps of paint. That's, to me, I don't even see it. But on the top side, you want that to look pretty, right? So, um, but now, I think you take this off. Oh my God. So I'm gonna clean up and maybe get some ice cream or maybe get some proper food or maybe take a nap. Maybe read a little bit. I've kind of started a new book. But I want to, uh, uh, but I'm ready to go with this painting on the hall. Hey guys. So over here on the port side, I'm not prepared to paint the after section here, but up forward I'm prepared to paint. This is what my this is what my front porch looks like when it's getting wet. You can't help but track up all the sand from all the sandblasting and stuff. And half the time it's got a bunch of ground up paint and stuff like that in there too. And so really, being in a boat yard makes it very, very difficult to keep your boat clean. So here I am today, uh, going to go slap on one more coat of, one more gallon of uh, bottom paint. And you Navy guys, I'm sure you remember that sound. See the air hose going in the hole? Somewhere on the inside, she's grinding away. Yeah, that's not what you'd want to have as a neighbor, you know, someone grinding dust right next to your boat. But at the moment, the wind's coming from where I'm looking, so it's actually blowing the dust away right now. So I'm actually hoping they're highly productive and get this done today. But it's been raining, see, when it rains, they stop, so nothing can do. Life in a boat yard. My guys made a lot of dust at one point. And at some point, it, it, it goes both ways, right? So. so on this channel before, I've talked about boatyards and how you compare them. And I remember up in Florida, I would say, well, in Florida, you're never allowed to do your own work because of insurance regulations, blah, blah, blah. And in Florida, for the same reason, uh, you're never allowed to live aboard. But I, I remember saying, if you could find a boatyard in the USA where you could live aboard, and do your own work. That would just be the cat's meow. And here, you can live aboard. You can do your own work. To some degree, you can bring in outside workers here if the marina approves them. And there's some bribery involved there. Um, 
you even have power and water at your boat, which is just, wow, you know, hard to imagine that, but you do. You know, I've got power and water. Now, at the moment, we don't have water because um, somebody damaged the water line yesterday, late in the day. <laughs> no. Well, after three straight days of rain, and you're in a boatyard where people are sanding and grinding and removing paint and the the concrete and has all this sandblasting grit all over it and so it's sandy but it's on concrete and it's blue and it's green from the different types of bottom paint and my boat was part of that as well I should point out um, you know it's just it turns your toes you know blue and green because you know because you everybody just wears flip-flops and it's just a pleasure. One thing this marina does that I don't think I've ever really seen is that it actually has a resort attached to it, which is a two-edged sword, but the positive is that it has this, what I'm doing. I'm walking barefoot through green, green grass, you know, and that's just a, a luxury that, you know, sailboat people, cruisers, don't get to have too often. Usually you go ashore into cities like Rio Dulce and you're traipsing around through mud puddles and in some cases fucking sewage in the streets and almost getting run over by these semi-trucks and it's just not pleasant. But here we have this little, it's like a garden, it's like a botanical park and it's very, their landscaping is very nicely done. And these guys, they take it seriously and they, they do a great job. But if, you, if you don't think that's beautiful, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, there's our favorite boat. Got a couple of large cat, a couple of large catamarans on the uh, this side, and there's that Fisher 46 right next to me. She's a motor sailor, a sailboat, technically a catch rig, but I don't think she would sail very quickly. And the ones behind that are all monohulls, a couple from Germany, American dude, and then a group for family from us, uh, Argentina. At the back row there, I see a couple of metal boats, monohulls. And that's the one thing I'll point out, is that monohulls used to be the primary type of boat for people who wanted to do round the world or, or long-term cruising. And you see a lot of them back here. I see the first one with a cool paint job, Tranquillo. It's pretty cool. But, uh, and, and you see some of the oddball boats, I mean, this big old, this type of catamaran. She's an older boat, looks like aluminum. Aluminum, but these modern catamarans, such as these guys in front of me, you know, those are becoming very popular. I think, I think every one of these large catamarans is owned by a European family. But, but in general, the catamarans seem to be the boat of choice for Europeans. Um, yeah, that's okay. To each their own. If you got the means, buy the boat you want, you know. This boat belongs to two folks I met, and they're from France. It's a very interesting boat. It's like a custom design, uh, solid aluminum. It has like the military style watertight water bulkhead doors, you know. And they have a hydro vane at the back, of course, like I do. But look at the, this thing. I've never seen a double rudder. I mean, this one obviously is a rudder that moves. This thing here, I've just never seen anything like that. It's not the keel, of course, because the keel's down here, although it's a very shallow draft boat, and it's got a raceable centerboard. But I've never seen one of these things, which looks like it can go up and down. I just find that very curious. Never seen that before. I think this is a wooden catamaran here. These are the kind of keels and rudders that make me nervous. You're just one false move away from losing either one. I'd much rather have the heavier keel way up.
And this looks like a... I don't know what if this is a... It looks like a, a fold-up keel. Looks like this keel probably folds up into the slot. I see a hydraulic piston. Whew, that to me looks like a problem waiting to happen. But who am I to say? That's what prop speed looks like. And I'm going to put my prop speed on in a couple of days. So many different types of boats. You really can't you really can't point at a certain design and say that's absolutely the best. Same with size of boats. We got boats here of all Yeah, you know, one thing I'll say about catamarans is that when you have one in the boatyard they serve an important function as an office and workshop for the boatyard guys. <laughs> I mean look they have set this area up to be the fiberglass, you know, nerve center for the whole fleet. I mean, all the the work that the boatyard is doing on all the different boats, this is where they kind of keep the center of their operations. Catamarans are good at that because, of course, they provide protection from the sun and the rain, which, you know, boats like mine just can't do. So the little cooktop and I see a, a television. They've turned the dinghy into a sofa. <laughs> like I say, these catamarans, they provide a service in the boatyards. Hey guys, I'm Russ. This is Sailing Vessel Tau Tau, as always. And I'm still in the boatyard in Rio Dulce at Nanawana in the marina there. Um, I would say, so let's say talk about work. The exact status right now is the bottom paint is completely done, except we have to move the stanchions a little bit and finish painting those little squares out. And then on the day of launching, we'll have to roll under the keel the best we can, and then we'll launch the boat. I need to put on the prop speed on the propeller. Top side, above the waterline, we're currently scraping the wood rails, and that just makes a god-awful mess. There's sawdust and varnish chippings everywhere, and it's just a mess. Which And it's such a mess that you really can't paint while they're doing that. It, they just don't, the jobs just don't go together. Um, but when the wood is completely prepared, then what we're going to do is hit the wood with a layer of thin, maybe two layers of thin epoxy, not varnish. And we're going to put on epoxy, and when that's cured up, then we're going to cover that and the paint on the sides of the hull with, with clear coat, an automotive style clear coat. That's what we're going to do. Um, and uh, then we'll just see what happens, and we'll splash the boat, and life will go on, whether that was a good idea or not. So. I did take a few days off this past week, and I, I took three days away, four days really, if you include bus travel, to go to Antigua. Not the island of Antigua, but to a city in Guatemala called Antigua. It's west of the big city, the capital city, by about an hour's drive. And I went there because it is just a cool little town up in the mountains, and the climate is to die for. Wow, when it's hot and humid down here, or raining all the time up there, it's cool and dry just love them I and I actually felt chilly on the evenings and in the early mornings so it was great wonderful old architecture has been preserved it's like being it reminded me mostly honestly of being in Malta when I was in Valletta in Malta I, I mean it's like got a, a very European feel with all the Spanish architecture just beautiful and a lot of expats choose to live in that area of Guatemala but the real reason for going out there was to also go to Sumpango, Sumpango which is where they have the kite festival, and I'll get some pictures of that after we follow it. I'll, you know, and some maybe some links or some explanations. So, basically, on All Saints Day, you uh, fly kites because you go to the top of a mountain and you fly kites with that are decorated with memories of your loved ones who have passed. You know, get them closer to heaven. But over the years, they've created these enormous kites that are not even capable of flying, but they're just again they're, they're giant decorative kites and it's really pretty cool very crowded but it was really pretty cool and I had a great time it was really good for me to take a few days away because I still feel like shit half the time my back is still not quite right my wrist still hurts I don't have any new injuries but that's only because I haven't done much work and the only work I have to do really is painting and putting on the prop speed but that's just hard to do when other workers are working on your boat sometimes. You know, there's so much sawdust, you can't put paint down. It's just not going to work out. So, so we're going to work through that, and I figure another week, week and a half, we'll be ready to roll. We'll get this boat in the water, 
and go on a shakedown cruise on the big lake. So that's the plan. We'll get your video out as soon as we're ready to launch this boat. So take care, everybody. Bye bye. So I'm here at the what we call the kite festival. I just left the cemetery where the folks were doing what I call the Day of the Dead, the decoration of the graves and mausoleums. <clears throat> but this is the kite festival and what you're looking at is kites being constructed. Now these kites are heavy and they don't really, they're not really made to fly. There are other kites being flown. But I think over the years the um, the kites have just kind of gotten bigger and bigger to the point it's, just, it's almost like different civic groups will have a, co a competition to make the fanciest float. Like a Junkanoo if you're in the Bahamas. You know, or, you know, the American holidays like Thanksgiving. Different groups like to make the big floats to go down the street. 